reflecting, you know, about atmospheres. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. You know, on Wednesday, um, I was trying to, you know, you know, how was Wednesday? Wednesday was just wow. Just, just wow. You know, we, um, and what I'm going to do, you know, today, you know, there's a, the, the third um, point that I was trying to bring home, you know, as to benefits of our reconnection, you know, with the governor. Remember, we're dealing with the kingdom culture, you know, our God is a king. Look at your neighbor and say, your God is a king. All right, now let's say, look at say neighbor, your God is a king. All right, now let's take it a little bit further. Say heaven is a country. All right, now you have to be able to understand, you know, that your God is a king. Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be you lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory, all right, the king of glory. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong, in, all right, okay. So your God is a king, all right. The obsession of every king is to take territory, all right. And there is an idea in the mind of God. Now, whenever you want to know what is in the mind of God, study Jesus, all right. In as much as Jesus, okay, yeah, I'm good. In as much as Jesus is not the end. But you have to understand something about idea. One of the most powerful things, you know, on earth is idea. All right, all right. Idea, you know, once it is understood, all right, then it becomes a concept. All right, but before it is understood, it is a precept. A precept. You know, it's before, you know, you know, the idea. All right. Now, the Bible calls Jesus, you know, Jesus is not Jesus in heaven. In heaven, he is the word. The Bible said that there are three that bear witness in heaven. The father, the word, and the spirit. All right. The word, when you go into etymology, all right, is a Greek word for logos. Logos is original idea. So in John, when the Bible said that in the beginning, there is an original idea. All right. And that original idea is in God. And that original idea is God. That original idea became flesh. All right. So there is something in the mind of God when he was creating the earth. Because he is a king, his obsession is to carry the influence of his kingdom to another territory called the earth. All right? And anytime a king takes a territory, he sends a governor. The first thing that the governor does is that he trains the people in the colony into the culture of the king. Because the nature of the king is the culture in the colony. Am I talking in House of Refuge? All right, okay. So, so, so when you want to understand what is in the mind of God, you see the church have done a very good work in religionizing us and taking us away from the original idea. And once, if you want to know something that is very pure, the more closer you are to the original idea, the more power you access. Am I talking in House of Refuge? All right, okay. Yeah, come on, put your hands together. Somebody wants to clap. Okay, okay, okay. So if I want to know what is in the mind of God, okay, then I need to be able to understand the logos. All right, so in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 17, when Jesus Christ came, his mission statement, and the first thing that he opened his mouth to say is repent. The word repent is not about sin. It's change the way that you are thinking. Why? The kingdom of heaven has arrived. How did it arrive? I brought it. All right, okay. In other words, in the mind of God, 
God wants to extend his governing influence over a territory. And the name of that territory is the earth. So he made man and he made and gave man kingdom. The word dominion is kingdom. Am I talking here? And then he now released the governor in man. Ha! Ah, why? Because anytime you have a colony, you need the Holy Spirit, who is the governor, to train the people in the culture so that the earth will be filled with the glory of the Lord like the waters covers the sea. Come on, put your hands together if you understand what I'm talking about. All right, okay, okay. So, of course, we have already ar agreed, okay, man sin, the governor left. So why did Jesus come? All right, this is why he came. He to bring back the kingdom. To bring back the influence of the king over another territory called the earth. The Bible said that it pleases the father that he gives you the kingdom. Am I talking in house of refuge? Okay, 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 all right, okay. I say, I, are you getting what I'm talking about? Okay, so the first thing that he opened his mouth to say, all right, now, but this kingdom has a culture. And God wants this culture to actually fill the earth. The culture cannot fill the earth without agents and agency like this. All right, okay, the agents have to be cleansed. Am I talking in house of refuge? All right, okay, now, we have already established and we have agreed all right, that whenever you have a colony, the, the governor is sent. When the governor comes into the colony, the first thing that he starts to do is to teach you the language because language is the carrier of culture. That's why when Lugard came, he has to teach us. That's why the reason why I'm speaking English is the sure fact that I am conquered by another kingdom. All right, the reason why I'm putting suit and tie is not guy. Is a testament that I am conquered. Oh no, somebody began. <laughs> conquered by who? Conquered by another kingdom that brought their culture, their dressing, their language, and they trained me with it. And I couldn't enter a university in Nigeria without speaking the language of a nation that conquered me. Same thing. Once you are restored into the kingdom of god the governor returns the governor could not come until you are cleansed that's why jesus christ had to die all right i think i took a lot of time to to do that all right so i'm actually supposed to teach on the administration but i i need to be able to allow us have an understanding of some certain things when you are reconnected we said that ability to influence is restored then number two, we said that dominion is restored. And then number three, that's where I stopped on Wednesday, you know, and I'm going to take it up. Number three, communication with heavenly government is restored. Somebody say, neighbor, you have access. No, say it with energy. Say, neighbor. You have access to the creator of the universe. Look at your neighbor and say, you, 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 you. You know, look at him again. Push the care of the person in front of you. Say, you have access. <laughs> All right, okay. Now, I want to teach you, um, and that might be maybe the only thing that I'm going to do today. And it's going to, some of you are going to thank God that you are in church today. I'm, I'm going to teach you some certain truth, you know, concerning the Holy Spirit and concerning your destiny and your tomorrow. All right. If you don't understand this, then you are going to be guessing and you might not be able to, your future might not be able to open up to you because there are requisite things that you need to do to activate your tomorrow and what you're going to get into it. All right, okay. So now for that to happen, communication with the heavenly government must be restored. All right. One way, you know, is that the, the, the governor enters into you. Now, the return of the governor, I said it on Wednesday, gives you the ability to communicate with the heavenly government. 
all right? Some of the things that I'm saying, they just look like words, but they are profound, all right? It gives you the ability to communicate with the heavenly government. What that means is that the only way we can bring the kingdom of heaven to earth and begin to have dominion over the earth is if we are able to receive clear, crystal, clean instruction from the king. Once you don't receive clear, crystal instruction from the king, you're going to be doing guesswork. And you might be meeting people that you call prophets to tell you what you're going to do and what you're going to enter. Listen to me. If you want to know the purpose of a thing, don't ask the thing. Ask the creator of the thing. The reason is because purpose is only found in the mind of the creator of the thing. Come on, put your hands together. Am I talking here? You don't ask a pastor or a prophet to tell you your purpose. Because him too, he's confused about his purpose. Am I talking here? Because the, come on, put your hands together if you understand what I'm talking about. Some of you, later, that, this place is going to be hot. Some of you, you carry a picture to a prophet to tell you whether this is your husband or your wife. You are sick and out of order. Oh, no, he's going to, you see, the reason why I preach, <laughs> the reason why I preach like this, and then use the word sick or stupid or things like that, it wakes you because I have to be provocative. The reason is because you have stayed long in religion. And one of the only things that will rejigger you is, am I talking here? You are sick and out of, <laughs> come on, come on, put your hands here. And, 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 and it's my trademark, it's my, it's my brand. <laughs> Whenever you hear a pastor begin to say you are sick, you are sick, you know that that guy is having a DNA of Pastor Diaz, right? <laughs> hallelujah. I say hallelujah. A kingdom can only function based on delegated authority. We have done, dealt with that on Wednesday. And only if the purpose, the will, and the intent or intention of the king are transmitted to that delegated authority. If you don't know the purpose, the will, and the intention of God, you can represent him here and you cannot increase the kingdom. The prayer of God is this. Every day pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Where? On earth. On earth. It's going to get a little bit, you know, wild. Anytime you're in a place or you're about to do a thing, or you're okay, once you don't have the intention or the intents of God, then you're in serious trouble. Whenever the governor is not present, or there is no communication of the government, or the communication of the government is absent or ignored, then practical rulership on earth is absent. The reason why Nigeria is in a mess, Africa, and the world, because the only perfect government is the government of heaven so in isaiah 9 the bible said that and, and unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder am i talking in house of refuge all right okay okay and he brought the government that's why we are actually supposed to take this government you know into 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 the places whenever the king of heaven Look at your neighbor and say, your God is a king. Okay, okay. You have, to be, you have to be familiar with some of these terminologies. You have not heard of it a lot. Look at your neighbor and say, your God is a king. Okay, say with energy again. Say, neighbor, your God is a king. Whenever the king, when we were colonized, Whenever the king or the queen wants to pass information to a colony called Nigeria, the king will not talk to you. The king will talk to the governor. And then the governor will talk to you. That's why I'm going to show you how powerful, you know, the, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, what God did with the Holy Spirit. So when the king is going to do anything on earth, he communicates it through the governor. And then the governor 
tells us. The reason is because nobody knows what is in the inside of you except your spirit. Same thing with God. Nobody knows what is inside of God except the spirit of God, which is the Holy Spirit. All right. Okay. So if he's going to transmit anything, his idea, all right, he's going to transmit it through, you know, the Holy Spirit. I'm going to read two scriptures and then I will start my message. I've not yet started my message. First Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 6 to 14 and then Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11 and 15. It's going to get wild today. Some of you, something is going to open. Some of you in before the year runs out, you start entering into everything that God has called you and ordained for you. I'm telling you, you're going to enter into what has been ordained for you before you even arrive here. You're not a mistake or an accident. Give me First Corinthians now. Now I'm going to now. I was thinking. Give me New King James. First Corinthians two. First Corinthians two, verse six two. Wow. Now, you see, the, the problem with us most often, we read the word, we don't understand, we don't ask, we don't probe, we just continue. Gather. However, we speak wisdom among those who are matured. Yet the wisdom that we speak is not the wisdom of this present age. Neither is it the wisdom of the rulers or the kingdoms, you know, of this age that are coming to naught or nothing. Next verse. But... Somebody say, but. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. I want you to underline the word mystery. The hidden wisdom. I want you to underline the word hidden. Crazy verse. It's a mystery and it's hidden. It's the wisdom of God. But look at when the wisdom is ordained. Ordained means established. It is ordained before the ages. Or before the world began. Why is the wisdom ordained? And what is that wisdom? The wisdom is for not God's glory. Most, yeah, come on, put your hands together. Most of us, we know about God's glory. But there's a wisdom that is ordained before you arrive here about you. That wisdom is created and ordained for your glory. The word glory there is advancement, moving forward. In other words, there is a wisdom, a wisdom. The wisdom is the wisdom of God, is ordained before you were even born. And that wisdom will expose you to your future and cause you to escalate to where he has called you to be. I'm going to help you. I will repeat it and over and over until you get it. It is not, you, you are talking, about, bring down your glory. What a, but there is something about your glory. Next verse. That which will take you forward. None of the rulers of this age knows it. Nobody, a human, 
knows it. The second, they cannot even, you know, you know, for the, if they have known it, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord. Next verse. But as it is written, let me finish before I, I break it. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man. The thing that God has prepared before you arrive here for you. Next. <laughs> Next verse. How can he prepare something? But I, I, I don't even know. And nobody can even know it. Crazy. But. Somebody say but. But God. Now, eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither. In other words, you can't study it. It can only be revealed. But God revealed them. What is the them? The thing that he has ordained for your advancement before you arrive. He revealed it to us through an agency. Today I'm going to actually deal with the secret, you know, CIA. Oh, no, 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 CID, Secret Intelligence, you know, you know, you know, Central Intelligence Department, right? Okay, right now that you're seated, if the DSS or the CID office, you know, zero in on you, everything about you, they will know, even if you don't even know that they know. There is something about you that it is only the Holy Spirit knows. Nobody on earth knows, even you, you're clueless. Because I have not seen. He revealed them to us. I didn't let him. He revealed them to us through his spirit. But the spirit, the spirit there is big letter S. Such is all things. Yea, the deep things of God. Next verse. For what man knows the things that is in the man except the spirit of the man which is in him. Even so, nobody ever knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Nobody knows what he has for you except his spirit. Next verse. This is why he's getting. But now, we, somebody say we. Somebody say I. Yes. Have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is from God. Why? So that I will know the things that are freely given to me by God. I'm going to take you into troubles. My time here is in the current Bible. And you're timing me? Ecclesiastes 3. You can't tell me when I'm reading the Bible. <laughs> Some of you are going to message me, let me close. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 11 and verse 15. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiawa. Very crazy scripture. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, look at it. He has put eternity, underline this word eternity, because you see, Solomon is prophesying something he doesn't even know. He has put eternity where? Not their heart, your heart. Because he's talking about us. He's talking about, he's, he's talking about a, a people. In their hearts. But when he has put eternity in their heart, they don't even, except that no one can find out the work that God does from where? I say from where? Okay, don't forget where I read. Verse 15. It's going, to, it's going to get wild. That which is has already been. And what is to be has already been. 
life. That which is has already been. And what is to be has already been. Your future is God's past. I will start preaching now. It's, it's, going to, it's going to get wild. Based on where we have read, I'm going to be repeating statements. Repetition makes you to understand and hold things. There is a wisdom, I don't know it. But I have to speak it. The reason is, it is said, before God says, let there be light, he has ordained that I speak that wisdom for my glory. And if I don't speak that wisdom, then I cannot be able to move into what he has ordained for me. Look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, there is a wisdom that you must speak for your glory. If you're writing, write the word glory. The word glory is advancement, movement, forward movement. There are a lot of you here are stagnant. Some of you, you call it delay. Some of you are hooked up and tight. Nothing is progressing in your life. The reason is because there is a wisdom that you must speak. And if you don't speak it, you cannot move forward. That wisdom is for your glory. But God has hidden the wisdom. The wisdom that is for your glory is hidden. Another thing that we understand here, that wisdom, you cannot learn it. It cannot come through senses. So that's where the problem is. So where is that wisdom? Based on where we have read, the Bible said that the wisdom, since it cannot be learned and cannot come through senses, it has to be revealed. Write the word reveal. Whenever you reveal a thing, you are not creating the thing. Now look, this is doctor's Cup. All right. You can't see it. The fact that you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. It is covered. For you to see it, it has to be revealed. Okay, let me say it again. Look at this cup. You didn't bring it, you didn't create it, it's there, but you can see it. The fact that you can see it doesn't mean it's not there. You can study to see it. To reveal is to take the cover off. Once the cover is taken off, then that which is hidden is now seen. So God said that there is a wisdom for your advancement, but it is covered. There is something that is inside of you that you need to speak. But that thing is hidden. It is a wisdom of God and the wisdom is for your advancement. You cannot learn it. The reason is because it is covered. If it is not revealed, you're going to spend years grappling in the dark. It is already there. But God has to pull the cover off. If he doesn't pull the cover off, you're going to have serious trouble. Not a prophet that will pull the cover off. Now, when he says that it is covered, verse 12 to 13, listen to me. 
it doesn't mean that God is playing keep away from you. He only means that for it to be revealed, it has to be my way. If it is not my way, you can do whatever you want to do. It's there. It's for your advancement. It's supposed to take you higher, but it's still going to be covered. Religion cannot uncover it. Your ways cannot uncover it if it is not my way. So there's a wisdom for your advancement that is hidden, but for it to activate your mouth has to say it. Your advancement is words sensitive or word activated. Your movement, okay, but for you to say it, you have to know it. But you can know it until it is revealed. That's why some of you, you're going to actually come to earth and die. And go to heaven without ever knowing why you are here. It's not that it's not there. It's covered. You can do experiment and meet other people. Your way cannot uncover it. And when you know the wisdom for it to begin to push you forward. What activates it? must be your voice. It has your signature. If your voice doesn't speak it, your advancement cannot show it. Come and put your hands together. I said, come and put your hands together. I said, come and put your hands together. That's why the Bible said that the spirit, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, there is a trouble here or there is a problem. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, there is a problem. And what's the problem? Eyes have not seen it. I have not seen what will push me forward. Ears have not even heard what will put. It has not even ever entered into the heart of any man what will put me forward. So, but where is it? If no human being has it, even you. So where is it? Uh, it's going to take my whole time. So the Bible said that the spirit such is all things and when God gives you this information anytime he reveals it normal human being and even you it looks extremely foolish because you are okay now how you know God is speaking to you is when you hear something that is extremely impossible you can never do it without God in it If it has been handled or you feel you can do it, then God, okay. So one way you know that God is speaking is that when he told you something that is totally impossible, then you know God is speaking. When God gives you something and you know beyond reasonable doubt that there is no way it can be done outside of God, then you know that you have heard from God. If your mind can understand it, if your mind can wrap around it, you have not heard from God. If your ears can understand it, if your eyes can see it, no, you have not. Because eyes have not seen. It has to be beyond so that the only person that can bring it to pass, that's why I know you're not exhibiting what God has said you should exhibit. Why? Because you're still in your comfort zone. What God has for you, no human being can phantom it. And it's extremely impossible by human wisdom. The, the wisdom of this age. All right, now. You see, it seems as if now flying at Iska. Ecclesiastes 3, Solomon said something. I'm going to build this here. Based on what Ecclesiastes 3, Solomon said that God has no future. To God, everything that you look is in his rear view mirror. Moses said, who do I tell Pharaoh? That sent me. God said, look, go tell him 
I am sent you. In other words, not I will be or I was. I am in a constant state of now. Look at your neighbor and say, I am. God doesn't get old. God doesn't grow. He doesn't learn. He doesn't increase. There is nothing he doesn't know. And there is nothing he doesn't have. You have to get knowledge by gathering information. God doesn't gather information to know. He knows. So, few characteristics about God. God hide things. God hide things. Things. One of the things that is consistent about God from Genesis to Revelation, you're going to begin to see, okay, say that if you're going to pray, go to the secret, secret place and pray to your father and God who sees in the secret will reward you. Why secret? He that dwelleth in the secret. Why secret? Because God hides things. We speak, listen to what he said, hidden wisdom in a mystery. In fact, the mystery man is a problem, but why hide it? It's a mystery, but it's hidden. On its own, as a mystery, you have confusion. But that same confusion is also hidden. So then the Bible now calls the kingdom mystery. That's why some of you can, you, somebody can live all his life and never understand the kingdom. You can do religion, you can be born again and never understand the kingdom. The whole kingdom is a mystery. Now, salvation is simple. In a second, like this. Pap, I can make you born again. But the kingdom is a whole thing. Listen. Jesus never preached any gospel. The only thing that he preaches is the gospel of the kingdom. When he began to preach, Matthew 4, 17, and when he began, he began to preach, the beginning of his preaching is that repent for the kingdom of heaven has arrived. Now, the, the challenge with churches here, digressing, I need to build some certain things, is that the churches are very good at preaching messages about Jesus. But they are very poor at preaching the message that Jesus preached. The message that Jesus, Jesus Christ never preached favor, never preached blessings, never preached what we are preaching breakthroughs. He never preached any of the, never preached prosperity, never preached healing, never. The only thing that he preached is the kingdom of heaven. The reason is because everything that we're preaching, if you have the kingdom, is in the inside of it. But you cannot preach everything and get the kingdom. That's why you are still not having it. You're still struggling it. Why? Because the thing, you have not gotten it. And he said that once somebody opens his eyes to see it, he's going to sell everything that he has to get it. Why? Because when you get it, you are going to gain back everything that you have sold. You can do religion and never enter kingdom. Why? It's a mystery. Why is it? <laughs> now, something about Jesus. They were not obsessed. Jesus was obsessed with this thing called 
the kingdom. So look at it. Every time he goes, he sees a seed. That the kingdom of heaven is like. He sees yeast. The kingdom of heaven is like. He sees pitilla. The kingdom of heaven. Yaga jishiri. The kingdom of heaven. Yaga itache. The kingdom of heaven. Yaga. The kingdom of heaven. Anything. If he comes to your house, yazona. Say yaga gashin ki zevara. The kingdom of heaven is like. Go and read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And let's debate. The kingdom of heaven is like, the kingdom of heaven is like, the kingdom is like, the kingdom is like, the kingdom of Most of us now, I'm going to say something that is going to shock you. Most of us are very good at bringing people to Jesus. But Jesus himself says, I am the door. Most of you have camped at the door. Whenever you see a door, a door is a passageway to something. Okay, now. So, so most of us, Jesus, Jesus, come to Jesus. In Kazogun, Jesus, then what? Jesus is a door. John 10, 7. You stop at the door. Hey, there is a house that the door gave you access into the house. The house is the kingdom. He's the door into that kingdom. In the kingdom, that's why you have dominion. You're a king. There's something he created so that you can rule over. You are still in, at the door. Leave the door. Look at your neighbor say, leave the door. I said, John, when I said, John 10, verse 7. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say unto you, this is Jesus talking. I am the what? Door. What is a door? Why is he a door? He's the door to where? Someone said that the door to heaven. No, the door to the kingdom of heaven. Okay, so now when you're at the door, why are you at the door? Why are you not? So, we bring, now he says, I'm not the end. I'm the way through the end, to the end. I'm a passageway. So if you come to me and enter through the door, then there is a whole new world that you can explore. That's why I said the cross. Okay, so some people, you're hanging on the cross. The cross is not the thing. The cross, the reason for the cross, listen to me. Whenever you have a goal, you don't go until you finish, right? Yeah. Jesus couldn't go until he finished the goal. What is the goal? The goal is to bring back the governor back to the colony. When did the, co the governor left? When Adam sinned. Okay, he said that, well, the kingdom of God is like a rich man who called his and, and, and gave them his treasure. He went to a far country to get, to get, he, he went to, to get, he's talking about God and talking about Genesis. But by the time he was returning, the people rejected him, talking about Adam. Okay. They rejected him. So the governor left. Now watch. When Jesus Christ was coming, he came with the governor. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He couldn't leave because his assignment is to leave the governor in the colony. But the governor cannot be left in the colony except the people are cleansed. But you see, when he came, because he's holy, he carries the governor. So he brought, that's why anywhere he said, he comes to that, the kingdom has arrived. Why is he saying the kingdom has arrived? Because when he comes there, the Holy Spirit is in him. You can have a colony 
I said that it's a colony when the governor is not there. So when he said that, when he comes, he said that the kingdom, heaven has arrived. He said that when I'm here, the Holy Spirit is with me, is here. And he never left. The reason why he never left, because his assignment is not finished. Now, what is his assignment? He needs to make you clean so that the governor that is in him can whoop, enters you. Once that happens, then he can go. If that never happened, he will not go. So he came. The way it can happen, he has to die. His blood will cleanse you. When his blood cleanse you, he gathered you. And whoosh. Once he now said that, wait for me 50 days. Immediately he finished why he came. Look at, he stood, the cloud handled him, and whoosh, he left. Why should he go? Because he has finished his assignment. What is his assignment? To bring the governor back to the earth. Why bring the governor back to the earth? And that's why we're here. That's what we're talking about. So when you hang on Jesus, he said, I'm the door. So don't hang on the door. There's something that when you pass through the door, you're going to have the Holy Spirit. Why are you going to have the Holy Spirit? So that your dominion is restored, so that you can go colonizing the earth and make the heaven. That's why every day you wake up, the kingdom come. Come and put your hands together. I, I said, come and put your hands together. Now, now, we are, we are because uh, enough, 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 religious devils, enough, 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 Jesus said the kingdom is a mystery. But when he is talking, look at it. Then the disciple came and met him and said, why are you talking to us in plain? But when you begin to talk to them, you begin to talk to them in stories. Look at what he said. He said, the reason why I talk to them in stories is so that they don't understand. I don't want them to know. That's what he said. He said, I will talk to them in parables so that seeing, they will not see. They will hear what I'm saying, but they will, less if they understand, they will be converted. But I don't want them to know. Why? The kingdom is never given to anybody that is casual. If the kingdom is going to be given to you, you must be a seeker. That's why he said that. Seek ye first the kingdom. If you don't seek it, you can't have it. So I'm going to cover it in a mystery. If you're casual, anyhow, like a discal, you can't have it. And your advancement is in it. Your progress is in it. Your provision is in it. You're going to have sweats all your life. Why? You're casual, very casual. I'm not going to give kingdom to casual people. I'm going to give it to seekers. He said that the people that will make the kingdom their obsession, I will give them the kingdom. And when I give them the kingdom, all these things shall be added. But I'm not going to give it if you're not a seeker. You have to seek. You have to have, if the kingdom is not your obsession, I'm going to make you to have sweat looking for everything that pagans are looking for. But if you seek, once you get it, you will stop praying for stuff. Because stuff is inside the kingdom. Oh. If you're writing, write this. God hides things. How many of you are happy in church? Let me show you another principle about God. I have to learn this. Whenever... God wants a thing. Look at me. He doesn't speak to the thing. He speaks to what is holding the thing. And he commands what is holding the thing.
to let it loose. I'll, I'll, let me say it again. Whenever God wants a thing, he does not speak to what he wants. He speaks to what is holding what he wants. And he commands what is holding what he wants to let it go. God never says cabbage, lettuce, carrots, comfort. No. He looked at the ground that is holding the seed. He said, the ground, bring forth. In other words, the potential is in the ground. So he speaks to the potential. Loose. He doesn't say, fish come, crab come, shark come. No. He looks at the water. Because the water is pregnant with that thing. And he speaks to what is holding. And he said that, let the water bring forth. He doesn't say star B. No. He looks at what is holding the star, which is the sky. And he speaks to the potential of the sky. And say, let loose. When he wanted to create you and me, he stood in the mirror and he saw himself. And he saw that you and I are trapped. We are his potential. And he said, let us, let loose. Biasa came out. Man, woman, children, all came forth. But all of those things that came forth were initially hidden. There are some things in the inside of you you don't even know, but they are inside. And they are voice activated. There are some things that are trapped in you that has to come forth. They are voice activated. God has things and he speaks to what is holding it. Your future is in the inside of you. Power is in the inside of you. Wealth is in the inside of you. Glory is in the inside of you. You have, but it's, it's, it's your potential. He has to speak to it to let it go. Why? It's hidden. Now, First John 2, 20. I'm teaching. How many of you are happy you're in church today? I'm going to wrap it up and hook it up to the Holy Spirit. If you don't have the Holy Spirit or you're not baptized with the Holy Spirit, you're going to miss everything in this life. First John 2.20, please be fast. This, this guy is... But you have an anointing, underline the word anointing, from the Holy One. Now, look at this crazy statement. And you know all. Come on, help me read it now. And you know Okay, problem. How? Hidden. Now, underline the word anointing. Now, look at it. And you. Now, watch. And the pastor. And the prophet. No. And who? Not the pastor. Not the prophet. You. Everybody that is looking at me right now, you have an anointing. Let me help you. The word anointing there means the Holy Ghost. How? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed. So the anointing is the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost is in me, I have not the pastor, you. Not the prophets, 
you, you that you are seated looking at me, you have anointing. And it is not the prophet or the pastor that know all things. You. Oh, come on, put your hands together. I said, come on, put your hands together. I said, come on, put your hands together. And I'm going to help you and connect this thing. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you, you are dangerous. Come on, look at the neighbor and say, you. If you can be in touch with your anointing, you can never be led astray. So the anointing is a description of the Holy Spirit taking up residence in you. When the Holy Spirit comes and lives in the inside of you, that's the description as being anointed or having the anointing. Crisis. And you know, now when I say you know all things, all of you is contrary to your senses. Because normally say, I don't know. But when they are saying everything, now, what you are saying is contrary. That's why you see your, your mind is the enemy of God. Come on, put your hands together. The problem is this. I know all things. But where do I know the all things? It's not in your head. It's in your spirit. In my spirit. I don't know him right here. My spirit knows everything about Biasa. Right now that you are looking at me, there is an information about Biasa that my spirit knows that even my head doesn't know. Why? My mind is unfruitful. That's what the Bible says now. Romans 8, 7 says, look at me, everybody look at me. Most of you have come up from a church or churches where the devil is your enemy. So let's fight devil. Let's fight. Let's go for warfare. Devil, devil. Your enemy is in the inside of you. It's not the devil. In fact, the enemy of God is your mind. The carnal mind. The word carnal is not sin. The word carnal is a mind that doesn't think the way God thinks. And when he sees how God thinks, he can accept it. some tap kai, carnal. And that mind is an enemy. Your enemy is here, is between your two ears. And when God wants to advance you, the Bible describes your enemy as in your head. The thing that is fighting you is not out there, it's between your ears. That's why the governor comes to train you into thinking like the king. And unless you start thinking like the king, the thing that I've freely given to you, you have, because when, when the thing that I've freely given to you, your mind will fight it. Okay. But if Aruba, Taina, and so what is between your two ears is an enemy. Oh God. When it comes, <laughs> look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, I have an enemy in me. Yeah. The Bible calls it the carnal mind. Okay. I'm going to deal with it later. Let me go. Now, watch. God carries everything about your life, the whole of your life, all the details of your life. Everything about your present, past, future, and put it in your spirit. And when he does that, your head doesn't even know it. It can be studied, it can only be revealed. Now, this is a challenge. Most people that are looking at me, when it comes to the biggest decisions of your life, you pick a call, a phone, you call somebody, or you run to your prophet. You're trying to tell them, biggest decision. Meanwhile, even the people that you're going to, God said that they don't even know. So you're running to a person 
to tell you about your future and God is saying that just like you don't know, the person that you went to also doesn't know. And while you are running, God said that I carry all of your future and I put it not outside of you, I put it in the inside of you. What you are looking for in Sokoto is actually in your Shokoto. Come and put your hands together. I said, come and put your hands together. I said, come and put your hands together. Now, if you don't know, how do you think somebody else will know? The person that is trying to help you with the details of your purpose don't even know the details of their own. Oh, no, I quit confusion. And that's why I quit confusion in the, in the body. Because God did research about you and he didn't put it in anybody. He carried the whole of that research and put it in the inside of you. So he said, prophet, show me. This is the picture. You see what I'm going to get married? So he said, let's fast 10 days. It's a lie. Because Koshima, he's having confusion. If you don't know, he can know. The only one that will know is Come and put your hands together. If you understand what I'm talking about. Hold the hand of your neighbor. Pull it like you want to pull it. Say, neighbor. Say, my neighbor. It's in the inside. I'm going to, can I take it higher? Killing devils. For one week. After one week, Kizo. He's a good man. Colossians 3. 1 to 3. Now look at this. You are dead. And your whole life is hid. Where? Where? In Christ. What is Christ? The anointing. The anointed one. The anointing. Christos. You are dead and your whole life is hidden in Christ. In God. Okay? Christ is anointed. So this is what actually happened. God carried the whole of your life and put it inside an anointing. The Holy Spirit. That's why if you don't have the governor, that's why the governor, oh, oh, I'm going to have somebody here. Some of you, you Dubai. Your past, your present, your future, look at me, is inside you. That means whenever God speaks to you, whatever is in the inside of you has to let go. Just like when he speaks to the ground and whatever is in the ground came forth. And he spoke to the water and whatever is in the water came forth. You have to allow him to speak to you so that whatever is in the you will come forth. But if he's going to speak to you, he has to use your mouth. Because what is in the inside of you for your advancement cannot come forth until your mouth activates it. Now, watch. If God has already put everything in your anointing, then it's not about something coming from the outside. It is about something that you have to push it out. Look at me. Your whole life is in the inside of you. So it's not what you're looking there. No, it's here. You have to bring it. Ah, somebody, come and put your hands together. I said, come on. I said, come and put your hands together. When God speaks to your spirit, your spirit has to give up your next season. Your spirit has to give up your tomorrow. And I don't know who I'm talking to. That which is trapped in the inside of you is about to have expression in the name of Jesus. Your next level is about to be birthed. My assignment, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, 
Comfort, comfort. Come on, put the, come on, hit your stomach. The stomach will say, Comfort, comfort. I come to talk to those of you that have never heard from God for a long time. God is about to speak to the confusion that is in your spirit, uh, and that which has held you for a long time is about to let you lose. Uh, am I talking in the house of refuge? Uh, power is about to show for that. Uh, next level is about to show for that. Uh, your wife is about to show for that. Uh, your comfort. Come on, clap if you understand. <clears throat> you might not know tomorrow, but something in the inside of you is moving. That thing is arranging, rearranging. He's ordering your step. This is a dangerous place to stop. Go. Can I, can I land this plane? I said, can I land this place? You see, when he ascended, he sat down. You see, some of you, you want God to be frustrated the way you're frustrated about your prayers not being answered. God is not moved. When he ascended, he sat down. And there's none of your trouble that will ever make him stand up. The reason why he sat down, he said that it is finished. Because what has been, what is, has been, what shall be, has been. Before your trouble, the solution is already there. You go to places and say that God is about you. God is about you. Listen to me. God is about to do nothing. God has already done everything. You are the one that is about to enter into everything that he has already done. Oh no, come on, put your hand. I said, come on. Uh, you are about to, because when it is revealed, then you will see what has already been done before the foundation. And you are about to enter. God is not about to do. He has done. He sat down and he said, it is finished. The problem that you're going through is already done with, finished. Come on, Kutafa, mana, Kutafa. I say, Nature Kutafa. God is not walking through time with you. He created time, but he's not in time. God is Alpha, he's Omega, he's beginning, he's end, he's author, he's finisher at the same time. Isaiah 46, 9 to, to 10 tells you that there's something that differentiates me from humans. I am the kind of God. Whenever I start a thing, it's because I have finished it. I speak the end of the thing before the beginning. And when I speak the end, I now bring you to start what I have already finished. That's why I can openly tell you that all things are going to work together for your good. Because when you're in chapter 7 and you're saying, why you? God said, I'm already in chapter 15 and I know that you have already won. You're married with your house and your children. And in chapter 7, all of your friends are married. And you're busy trying to look for prophet. God said, shut up, stop. What will be has been, what has been, has been. This, uh, come on, put your hands together if you understand what I'm talking about. That's why, I come, that's why Paul said, he... Who has begun a good work shall complete it. Why? Whenever it started, it's because it's finished. Listen to me. If you're here, you're breathing, you're already finished. Come on, put your hands together. The, the, what you're going through, the pit can never cancel the end. That's why on Wednesday I said that the beginning, he already declared dominion. No matter what happened, he's going to get it. You're the head. No matter what happened, you will be. Why? He's going to. If you're writing, I want you to write this. I'm about to sit down. Come on, Kutafa Mkungani, because now Kusan Zona. You are 
every day, slowly becoming what you already are. You are every day, slowly becoming. What that means is that I'm in time and I'm slowly becoming what God has already spoken. So Ecclesiastes, and about to say, somebody say, Pastor, I'm about to sit down. Now, look at it. So he said, nobody knows God except the spirit of God. And nobody knows a man except the spirit of man. Now, so in the heaven, we have the father, the word, and the spirit. Can I use you? The spirit is the inquisitive one. So this is what the spirit does. The spirit goes into the mind of God. And he said, Lord, can you see Pastor Helder? God said, yes. Then he goes into the mind of God and begins to inquire everything that God has for Pastor Helder, past, present, and future. When he gets it, then one day, Pastor Helder becomes born again. Immediately he becomes born again, he opens a door. Once immediately he opens the door and receives the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit that has gone into the mind of God and knows everything about Pastor Helder comes in and enters Pastor Helder. Shoo! While Pastor Helder is standing, everything that God has said from the beginning about Pastor Helder is in the inside of Pastor Helder in the form of the Holy Spirit. That thing is what, where we read, is called wisdom, but in a mystery, hidden. But for his advancement, his mouth have to activate that wisdom. But you see, that wisdom is a mystery. So how is it? Now, 1 Corinthians 2. First Corinthians 2 and verse 7. First Corinthians 2. Give me first Corinthians 2 and verse 7. No, stand up. I'm not done with you. First Corinthians. But we speak the wisdom in a mystery. Somebody say wisdom in a mystery. All right. So now go to First Corinthians 14, verse 2. Hidden wisdom. First Corinthians 14, verse 2. For he that speaks in tongues does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him, however, in the spirit, he speaks what? For we have wisdom hidden in what? But he that speaks in tongues speaks what? Mysteries. But we speak wisdom. Okay, so the Holy Spirit went into the mind of God, knows everything for your glory, and then he enters into you. Then he gives you a language. Okay, he has secret information hidden in secret places that can only be activated by a secret language that will bring what is in the secret places so that you can activate and go forward with your life. Somebody began what I'm talking about. I said, I said, somebody began what I'm talking about. I said, somebody began what I'm talking about. Why is the language secret? The reason is because, you see, you have enemies that can intercept. You see, when you're in a war or things like that, what the only thing that other people do is they intercept into your conversation. When they intercept into your conversation, they preempt your move. So before you attack, they already attack. Am I talking here? So God said, I'm going to do something. That thing is going to be hidden. You see, it is not hidden from you. It is hidden for you, but it's hidden from the enemy. 
Am I talking here? So when I had it in the inside of you, I'm going to give you a secret word, language, code, so that when you begin to speak it, the enemy cannot eavesdrop into what you are saying because they are mysteries and they cannot understand. But when you are saying it, you are activating your glory so that they wake up today and tomorrow you're already in your future. Am I talking in the house of refuge? While they are wondering what is happening to you, they want to put you down. They cannot. Why? Because they can't hear what what you are saying but what you are saying is activating your glory so that as you're speaking in tongues you're entering into everything that God has prepared for you before the world began come on put your hands together and you're stepping into everything that is freely given to you and the devil cannot handle it the people cannot because they cannot hear it they cannot intercept it if it is secret you need secret words to unlock secret things so that you can move into the future that God has for you that is why if you are here and you don't speak in that mystery, you cannot be able to understand and unlock the hidden mystery, which is everything about your life that is activated by your voice for your own glory. Your glory is for your advancement, for your forward movement, and for your future. That's why if you don't do that, you're going to be stagnated in life. So it's not about Jesus. It's not actually even about tongues. It's about your forward movement. But your forward movement is voice activated. But the voice that is activating it is not a voice that can be intercepted by any other person. It's a voice that is also a mystery. Because what is hidden is also a mystery. So when you begin to more colose prakanata, ramanto brekanita mande bragaya, zonoto parhala katese poko. So everything that is in your past is in you. In your present is in you, and in your future is in you. While the devil is confused, he's trying to attack. He doesn't know that you have secret words, so that when you wake up tomorrow, you move forward. You begin to make advancement in life, and you don't even know how. And while you're doing that, your mind is unfruitful because you can't study it. So what God does is that he comes in and then he unveils. Am I talking here? Come on, put your hands together. I said, come on, put your hands together. My time is up. What eyes have not seen? What ears have not heard? What has never even entered into the heart of your father, your mother, or even you? God has revealed it. So Solomon saw, he said he has put eternity. If you're writing put eternity, he calls Holy Spirit. He doesn't know that the eternity that he's talking about is Holy Spirit. That's why you call God eternal God. So when he said that he put eternity in him, he actually, because he cannot phantom because all, he has put the Holy Spirit in him and in the inside of you what will be has been, what shall be has been nothing can take you by surprise he has put eternity and at his seasons he makes everything beautiful listen to me, go to bed and sleep nothing can bring you down I come to tell somebody, listen to me hey look at me Everything is going to be all right. Let me say it again. Hush, little baby, don't you cry. He's not going to sing you a lullaby, but I'm going to tell you that everything is going to be all right. You are not a failure and you can never be a failure. You can never lose. You can never go under. But you have to hook up to a secret language so that you can get touched with secret wisdom that is in the secret place that can only be unlocked by secret language so that it can rearrange your future. It is for your glory, for your advancement. Somebody, before the year runs out, you are about to enter into something that eyes have not seen. 
ears have not heard. You can't study it and make conclusion. Some of you are about to handle money that your head will burst when you begin to wrap your mind around it. Because it's going to be by the hand of God. Your future cannot be studied, learned by anybody. It can only be revealed. And it can be only be revealed. But so, so that's why I said I'm going to do that. What he did, he restored communication with the king. And that communication, nobody understands it. It's a secret code that is only you. Mante brekos tokara mante bregas. The devil said, I make another that Mate Kali Hasa Kandre Gasatamante. Zonon to Prakata Sefam Bazaza. You have already arranged things. Why? Because you see, when I stand here, eternity is in the inside of me. Eternity is in the inside of me. What has been is in the inside of me. What shall be is in the inside of me. And when you begin to speak in tongues, you activate what you are trying to say that comfort, comfort, next season, comfort, breakthrough, comfort, healing, comfort, rising, comfort. You are speaking to the thing that held what is in the inside to release it so that you can enter. It's a central intelligence department here. Nobody knows. Let nobody lie to you. Nobody knows. Except he that searches the mind of God. But when he finished searching about your husband, about your wife, about where you're going to be, about everything, he came out from the mind of God and he came woo, woo, and entered into you. Right now, it's in the inside of you. I said, right now, it's in the inside of you. It can be activated when you are filled to overflowing. You're activating it. I don't even know primary school. I, I have no memory of my primary school. I was just like that girl. I was, I was just like that girl. I came to the university with still those secondary school little memory. Then got filled with the Holy Ghost. Marakotoba. My brain activated itself. I enter class, things will be de, de charke. I'll go and lie down and wake up solving it in my dream, take a paper and then I will solve it. Why? You know all things. That's what, you have an anointing, it's in the inside of you and you know all things. You have ideas that no professor ever knows. Their mind have never contained it. Eyes have never seen. Everything is in the inside of you. That's why you can never be stranded. Why? You know all things. If you're confused, all you need to do is to activate and push it out. That's why you need to have the governor. So that every morning you begin to bring the will of God in your life for that day. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. Yeah, you want to clap? Come on, clap. hindrances to your forward movement has come to an end today in the name of Jesus I speak to the potentials that are in the inside of you loose in the name of Jesus that governor loose that doctor that lawyer that husband that wife that child loose that breakthrough that kingdom it pleases the father that he gives you the kingdom I command the system of your deep to be let loose. Broken in the name of Jesus. I command levels in your spirit. Let loose in the name of Jesus. I command creativity that the world will stand at attention and cannot understand it. In the name of Jesus. I call contracts that your normal mind cannot understand. In the name of Jesus. I open doors that no man can open. And no man can shut it. In the name of Jesus. I bless the work of your hands. I demand that you will hear and in 
precision enter. Your future is clear and you are cleared for takeoff in the name of Jesus. Go and prosper in Jesus' name.